Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the phone games of the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So recently, I've created a bunch of videos of texting games of the narcissist, the waiting games of the narcissist, and this one's gonna be the phone games of the narcissist because many people wanted to hear this video after I created a similar video last week. Now, here we go, the phone games of the narcissist. The narcissist loves their smartphone. That would say that it is akin to a third arm to them. They are frequently without their smartphone. And you may say, well, yeah, Andrew, that's me too. I go take my smartphone everywhere I go too. I'm sure you do. Maybe you're even watching this video on your smartphone, but what you don't do is use the smartphone as a weapon, which I will really dig into here. You see, the smartphone to you, it is a device meant to get information and to distribute information, correct information. It's a way for you to communicate with healthy or stable people. You also probably have some apps on it or some other websites that you like to go to to check out, maybe shopping, etc. Okay, I get it. That's what a smartphone should be. The phone games of the narcissist, they begin virtually the minute you met them, if you met them in the advent of the internet, i.e. smartphone time frame. I'm sure you probably did, maybe you did, or maybe you're, you met them yesterday and you met them on a dating app, by the way. Be careful dating apps, they're not, a, they're not what you think they are. But the phone games of the narcissist, this is how the narcissist manipulates multiple people at one time. And back when you first met them, maybe you did meet them through the smartphone, and you thought that you were the only person who was about to enter a relationship with them. Well, not so fast. The narcissist needs multiple sources of supply. It will not ever be just one person. You may think, well, I married the narcissist for 10, 20, 30, 50 years. They certainly were loyal to me or I was the, the, the main person. You can think whatever you want. I wasn't in that relationship with you. What I do know is think about how the narcissist uses the smartphone. Think about how many different masks the narcissist can wear via the smartphone. Think about all the strange people that would pop up and in and out of the narcissist's life and you didn't even know these people and they just chalked them up to being, oh, just a high school friend, etc. And think about how the narcissist would disappear for a couple days. Oh, I just need to go reset or I need to go take a trip to the mountains. Just me and the, you know, my friends. Not so fast. But the phone games of the narcissist began when you met them most likely. And they would probably be texting you in the very early stages of the relationship. Maybe cute emojis, maybe unicorns, puppies, rainbows, hearts, etc. And again, I've mentioned this example so frequently on videos throughout the last year. They would play these texting games on the phone. They would send you a bunch of emojis. And in the beginning, when you were being love bombed, you didn't even know that anyone would send three or four or five different hearts to you because who had done that in the past? Probably nobody, because one heart would suffice. But the narcissist always overplays their hand and they did that in the beginning via the phone. So they would probably be texting you all the cute emojis and the puppies and rainbows and you would fall for it or you did fall for it. Next thing you know, you sent them back 10 puppies or rainbows or unicorns or hearts. And then they realized after a couple, after a period of time, maybe a couple weeks or maybe a month or two, they realized they really had their fangs sunken into you. And one of the ways they did it was via the phone. Now what would they, they would do next is after those emojis disappeared and they all dried up, you would still stay stuck in sending them the emojis and you would be talking to them. Hey, what's going on? Did you get my message? I'm talking via text on the phone. Did you get my message? And they would be pulling away from you slowly, insidiously. You see, you no longer were the flavor of the month. You thought that you were in a relationship with a person who was reci reciprocating back to you what you were doing with them, meaning being empathetic, kind, loving, stable, healthy. That's what the narcissist wore as a mask to get you to enter that relationship. And when they begin to withdraw from you, it's too late. Their dirty fangs are already sunken into you and you can't wrap your head around how all that fake love, fake empathy, fake kindness just disappeared virtually overnight. It disappeared for multiple reasons. One is because they knew they had you and they had now placed you in that devaluation stage where you were pining for them or thinking about them or wondering where they are, who they're with. And you would be texting them virtually every day or maybe even calling them or maybe using a Zoom call or video call. And many times when you would reach out to them, they would go radio silent or they would type the letter K to you to completely invalidate you and to make you feel less than because that's what the narcissist does. The narcissist needs people to pump up their fragile egos and they need people to be yes people. 
and they need enablers and they need flying monkeys and they need people to regulate themselves. And at one point that was you, it certainly was me. But now that you get the wisdom and you understand that the phone that you use to communicate with people or check out uh, what's going on in the world with news, whatever you do, that is a healthy way to use the phone. A non-healthy way is to sit there scrolling through social media apps, making and creating fake accounts, spying on people, withdrawing from people, acting like you are somebody that you're not, taking selfies and using 30 different filters on them to make it appear like you were right in front of the Egyptian pyramids when in fact you haven't left your parents' basement in five years. This is what the narcissist does. They want to hoodwink people and capture them and they use the smartphone so well because they're on it so frequently. Many times when you would be with the narcissist, you could be at a dinner or a lunch or barbecue and you'd be sitting right next to the narcissist and they would be on their smartphone. Why do you think they were on their smartphone rather than being present in the moment with you? Number one, because they're telling you when that would happen that number one, they're telling you that you don't matter. I already have you, you're going nowhere and you're in the fog so you, you can't figure out what I'm doing. But two, I need to line up your replacement and the quickest best way for me to do that is get credit to be at that function with you although I'm not talking to you or communicating with you, and line up other sources of supply on my smartphone. This is what these people do. That's why they're crawling all over dating apps. That's why they are stalking people's social media. That's why they are watching what people do. And the phone games of the narcissist will continue. As long as there are smartphones, they will continue. My belief is eventually the smartphone will disappear. You may say, well, what are you talking about? Well, it's just simple. It's a idea that the phone, if you think about it, many people are walking the planet and their neck is hunched over and they're holding their phone in their hand. They don't even watch where they're walking. And the narcissist is definitely one of those people, but there's gotta be a better way than a smartphone. Maybe something in uh, what AI can create or whatever. But all these things I'm mentioning to you are the things, the manipulating techniques of the narcissist. The narcissist fine tunes their craft. They, they get discovered on the smartphone eventually. Let's go back to dating apps for a quick second. If you were on them, drop your comments below, share with the community what your experiences were. And yes, I do understand every once in a while people can, can find friendship or romance on a dating app, I get that, but those people are few and far between. But the narcissist, think about when you would call them out on the smartphone, you would text them and you would say, hey, you told me you're gonna be here at six o'clock, I made dinner, I've been waiting for you, it's now 7.30, where are you? Well, what would they do then again? They would either read the message and not respond. Maybe they would send you the letter K or they'll come up with a phony alibi. I'm stuck in traffic or I'm staying late at work. Oh, didn't see the message. I'm so sorry, I apologize. Or maybe they would just claim that their battery died. But if they did any and or all of those things, this is how the narcissist keeps people stuck. They keep people in a loop waiting for the narcissist and they're controlling people from halfway around the globe via their smartphone. Think about that one. Well, the smartphone, let's say that you are communicating with the narcissist via your smartphone and they're in a different country, maybe a different time zone, who knows? Well, what happens there? Many times they will tell you, hey, I'll call you tomorrow morning at eight o'clock as soon as I get up. And then tomorrow morning you get up at seven o'clock and you're waiting to hear from them and it's now 10.30 and radio silent, nothing has happened. Why? Because the narcissist was ruining your day. They were controlling you via the smartphone, telling you that they would call you at eight and they didn't do anything of the kind. This is the loop the people that the narcissist wants to keep people stuck in the loop. They want people believing in the mask and they want people waiting for them and they want people to manipulate and take advantage of. And the smartphone is one of the best ways they can do this. It is so simple. Think about when you were in the relationship and you would be waiting. Let's say you were, you had to do something and you, you came home and you were waiting for the narcissist to text you for whatever reason, I'm late pick this up, don't do that here. What? Remember, you were the walking apology, the unpaid helper, you were the sounding board, so you were, you were waiting for your uh, instructions, if you will, via smartphone. But what would happen is the narcissist many times would come home and they would tell you, hey, didn't you check your messages? I texted you. And you're like, I've been sitting here for the last three hours waiting for you and I didn't get a text. And then they look at their phone and what do they do? Oh, they never sent the text, but they're not gonna tell you that. So they'll type in a couple quick words and say, Oh, I forgot to send it. See, see here, oh, my fault, I'm sorry. And then you're scratching your head saying, who would forget to send a text? Everyone hits the button and it gets sent. And then you know the message has been sent and most times it's received. But that's not what the narcissist does. They play the games, they play the angles any way possible. Think about this one. It's post-relationship. 
you're on the healing path, you're well on the healing path, or maybe you haven't blocked the narcissist yet, whatever, but you, maybe you get a, a phantom phone call and it's the narcissist and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? And you pick it up and what do they do? Many times they do nothing. They just listen to you asking questions like, who is this? Is it you? Are you okay? What's going on? And then other times they will, if you, if you did pick up, they would be sitting there and you'd say hello and they would say to you, oh, it's you, sorry. I, I must have been a butt dial. I didn't mean to call you. Click. And then you're like, wait a minute, what happened there? Why, why, uh, did, uh, was it really a butt dial? Wasn't it? Was it strategic? I don't know. I'll tell you right now, the narcissist uses the phone so many different ways, but that phantom butt dial was not a butt dial. It was the narcissist trying to keep you stuck and trying to keep you thinking about them and having you think, having them live in your mind rent free. That's what they wanted to do. That's why on the channel I suggest so frequently in videos, the path is to go no contact, to block these people, delete them, remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them. If you can't utilize Grey Rock, but understand the games will continue via phone as long as you are in correspondence or communication with the narcissist. Think about emails on the phone. You're having a great day. Your narcissist is free. You block them. It's been years. Everything's going swimmingly. You're at a barbecue. You're at there at, with a whole. You're in a, in a whole new environment, city, town, state, country, whatever. Everything's going great, and you just happen to check your phone, and your guard is down, but your boundaries are up because you've gone no contact, etc. And years have passed, and you've healed. You check your email. Boom. What happens? Oh my gosh! It's the narcissist. I haven't heard from them in five or ten years. And what's this? What's going on here? Well, number one. Your day has just been blown up because probably you just took a setback, meaning now you're spiraling backwards. Or maybe if you're super strong and galvanized in the third version of yourself, it's not going to affect you. You're just going to hit delete and laugh it off and say, wow, this person's so pathetic. They still are looking to be in contact with me. But the point being, if you haven't healed, you may open that email. And in that email, you're not going to read anything of substance, of anything of importance. You're probably going to get a Hoover via email or you're going to get blamed for something you did or didn't do 10, 20, 30 years ago. This is what the narcissist wants. They want people to stay trapped and stuck. They want people checking their emails every minute. They want people waiting by the phone every minute. They want people uh, reading their texts or texting them or having the ability to text. The narcissist does so many things that are calculated and they're meant to keep people trapped. And the narcissist does know what they're doing. How about this one? The narcissist has access to your Amazon account or something like that. And this is again when you didn't cut all ties with them. And then you get a, a package from, from your account that they're hooked up to, or maybe it's even their account. And, and then you get a message on the phone saying, Amazon shipment arrived. And you're like, what? Is, well, I didn't order anything. What is it? It's a package. It's a Hoover. It's from the narcissist. These are the games of the phone that the narcissist plays. They want you to stay trapped. They don't want you to heal. They want you to continue to believe that the past wasn't what you think and or know it was. The past can be just wiped away like a chalkboard in grade school when you got the erasers and you cleaned everything up after a geometry class or whatever class it was, history. They don't want to be accountable or introspect and they believe that you will always fall for it. So the narcissist needs a few things. One, they need a new shiny object. Two, they need their smartphone. Three, they need a, a, a battery with a full charge. Four, they need to look for people and to take advantage of them. And five, they want to control virtually everything. Think about communication with the narcissist when you're in the relationship with them. If they wanted to answer the phone and there was something in it for them, they would do it. If they needed something from you, you were the first person they would call. Go pick up the kids, go put gas in the car, cut the grass, do the dishes, rake the leaves, um, dig out that old box from the attic from 15 years ago that I wanna go recycle and take a look at. And you're sitting there on the couch thinking to yourself, I just got a list of seven th things to do. I'm having a nice peaceful Saturday morning. The narcissist is, is off gallivanting the globe or getting a new source of supply that I don't know about because I don't know what narcissism is at the time. But I get a list of things to do and they're not even with me, but they're controlling my day. They're ruining my Saturday. And what did you do? Back then you got up off the couch, you did everything you were supposed to do. Then you probably sent a text back, done, 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 done. Okay, wow, that was good. You did that in only four and a half hours, fantastic. Here's another 50 page item list to do before I get home at eight o'clock tonight. Oh, and by the way, I'm not gonna tell you this, but I won't be home at eight, I'll be home at 11 because I'm out looking for your replacement or I'm gonna be out doing something else, but I'm gonna keep you strung along working for me and working for the household while you are doing everything that I should be doing. I will be living my life and I'll be keeping you trapped and I'll do it from miles away because I can control you. Think about when the narcissist will go away on a alleged business trip or go to a seminar or something, wink, wink, 
what would they do then? Well, they would contact you and say, hey, did this get done? Did that get done? Oh, can you go to the bank and pay this for me? Did, did you feed the kids? Did, did you take the dog for a walk? Don't forget the dog has to go to the vet. Don't forget you have to drive 15 hours to go pick up so-and-so because they don't have a ride and you're the person that has to do it. And you're thinking, wait a minute, you're in a different country, in a different time zone, and you're allegedly taking classes or whatever you're doing, and I am here in charge of the house. I know what I'm doing, but no, they can't have that. They're always checking up on you. They're always checking in on you. They're always seeing if you're doing what they want you to do. And the smartphone is one of the best ways they do it. That's why the narcissist gets supplied 24 seven on the phone because it is available. The internet is everywhere or virtually everywhere right now. And the narcissist, they have fine tuned their craft and their skills of manipulation, not only with you, but with sources of supply before you. And what they're doing is they're just using and applying these skills to new people, to new people that haven't understood what the narcissistic abusive cycle is to people that don't know their worth or their value to empaths to people pleasers to naive people to people who will believe in all the nonsense of the narcissist and this is how the narcissist goes from person to person city to city town to town country to country because they need new shiny objects eventually these people get discovered eventually they get revealed each and every one of us in time reveals ourselves you do i do we all do and when that happens, usually, if you're not a narcissist, it's a great thing because perhaps you face some adversity and you've overcome some things that many people couldn't overcome. The narcissistic relationship is just one of those things. But when the, the adversity hits the narcissist, usually they run because they can't face the facts. They're cowards and they're bullies. And what will they do? They will disappear to another person using their smartphone, throwing you under the bus, claiming that they are the victim and you did everything not in a good way. And then what, that, what will happen there? That person who doesn't have the wisdom will take them in, think that they are the white knight in shining armor, and they will continue to be trapped in the phone games of the narcissist where you once were. And then they will take your place. And then what will happen? You will heal, or you have healed, and you'll discover how strong and powerful you actually are and how weak and callous the narcissist actually is. But that new person, i.e. the new supply, they took your place. They stepped right in in the deep end of destruction, in the cesspool of manipulation, and in the desert of abuse that's what they did and they didn't know it you didn't know it i didn't know it but now we do know it and now we're healing we're learning we're growing we're teaching if we can we're taking a class teaching a class reading a book writing a book we're understanding that we are the priority we come first second and third there is no time for the narcissist of the past any narcissist in the present or future to enter your life any longer because you now have boundaries and you don't take the bait you don't sit around waiting for someone to text you you don't tolerate somebody making plans with you continuously and breaking them and not even apologizing for them. You don't tolerate all the verbal abuse that you would hear from somebody. Maybe it's on the phone or the texting, all the monologues that they would send you about how you didn't do something or how you're worthless, etc. These are all techniques. And many of them, by the way, side note, pro tip, many of the uh, messages that you would get when you were in the narcissistic relationship, no matter what they were, meant not. I will say some, not many, some of them were copy paste. Example this, let's say that you were dating the narcissist before you knew they were one and you were not living together. Well, you may get a message, something like this, good morning with a couple emojis. And then you're thinking, wow, that person really cares about me. They're thinking about me so early, this is beautiful. And you send them a message back, okay, I get it. Well, you're doing it out of the kindness of your heart and being an empath, etc. What they're doing is they're fishing. They copy, paste, send that to you and probably two, three, four other people and they see who responds quickest and who responds with the most words and the most caring. And when they figure out who that is, again, this is not all the time, it's at times. When they figure out who that is, then they're like, oh, this one's in the deep end already? I better go put them a little deeper so I can really have them on the hook and I can keep them waiting for me and I continue to play the phone games with them. And I'll look at these other two or three people I was texting and eventually, hopefully one or two of those comes around too and enters the deep end. And, the cycle goes on and on and on. Remember, the cycle will always go on. It just needs to go on without you. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. And the phone games of the narcissist, remember, this is why I share it so frequently. If you have the ability to go no contact and block these people, do it. But they will weaponize the phone any way they possibly can to alienate you from anything that matters to you. Same thing with the kids. I'm gonna say it super quick, I'm gonna go. If, you're, if you divorce the narcissist or you had children together and the narcissist has custody, many times they won't even let you talk to them on the phone. Think about this. 
it's a weapon for the narcissist. And yes, they do know what they're doing. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye, guys.